from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! On September 11th was a terrorist atrocity. So is the reaction to it. Uh, literally, literally, by the literal meaning of the word terrorism as defined in U.S. official documents. Terrorism is the calculated use, threat, or use of violence to achieve political or other ends through intimidation or fear. Professor Noam Chomsky, as we continue to mark the decades since the September 11th attacks, we spend the hour with MIT professor, world-renowned political dissident, linguist, and author. Ten years ago, his book 9-11 provided the definitive counter-narrative to the call for war on Iraq and Afghanistan. It's just been republished with an updated essay looking at the killing of Osama bin Laden. Chomsky asks, was there an alternative? We'll look at the decades since 9-11, U.S. wars abroad, the uprising in the Middle East, and more. There's a democratic uprising here. Now, there isn't going to be much chance for the people elsewhere who are uh, uh, struggling courageously. What they're doing is inspiring. And we should recognize that, but we can't overlook the fact that what the U.S. and Europe do, that's Europe too, is very significant. Professor Noam Chomsky for the hour. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The Taliban has launched a coordinated attack in the Afghan capital of Kabul, targeting the U.S. Embassy and the headquarters of NATO's International Security Assistance Force. The Taliban attackers were armed with rocket-propelled grenades, AK-47s and suicide vests. At least four people were injured. The attack comes less than two months after Afghan forces assume formal responsibility for security in the capital. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad has told NBC News that two Americans given eight-year prison sentences for spying and entering the country illegally will be released in two days. According to the Associated Press, Iran has set bail of $500,000 for the two men, Shane Bauer and Josh Fatal. A defense attorney for the men said the Iranian court would free Bauer and Fatal after the money was paid. The pair were arrested in 2009, along with their friend Sarah Shord, after they mistakenly crossed from northern Iraq into Iran while on a hike. The men have adamantly denied the spy charges. Bauer is a freelance journalist who's contributed to Democracy Now! and other news outlets. The White House said Monday President Obama is proposing cutting $467 billion in tax breaks for wealthier Americans and some companies to offset the cost of his job creation plan. Obama is proposing limiting itemized deductions for Americans making $250,000 or more a year and ending tax breaks for oil companies, corporate jet owners and investment fund managers. Jack Lew is the White House budget director. At its most simple level, what the president said on Thursday night uh, stands and it, it is just profoundly true. We can't afford everything. We have to make choices. And I think if the American people were asked to make a choice between tax breaks for investment fund managers who get preferential uh, treatment for carried interest and oil and gas uh, industry tax breaks that treat oil and gas more favorably than other investments, and corporate jets that are treated more favorably than commercial, that is not a hard choice for most Americans if the choice is creating you know, economic growth and jobs or tolerating um, the results of many years of inequities in the tax code. In other job news, Bank of America, the nation's largest bank, has announced plans to cut 30,000 jobs over the next few years. That's slightly more than 10 percent of its global workforce. The bank's already cut 6,000 jobs this year. In news from Libya, Mustafa Abdul Jalil, the head of the National Transitional Council, spoke before 10,000 supporters Monday in his first speech from Martyr Square in Tripoli. The former Libyan justice minister called for unity and moderation. It's a great honor for anyone to stand before this crowd in this situation and on this occasion.
and at a time when Libya and all Libyans get rid of the tyrants. So the Libyan people return dignified and honored by his action and his courage. Mustafa Abdul Jalil's speech comes at a time when sharp splits are emerging in the ranks of Libya's new rulers between Islamic conservatives and more secular figures competing for power. The Associated Press reports the rising tensions could jeopardize efforts to rebuild the country and form a cohesive state after six months of civil war. Amnesty International has accused forces loyal to Muammar Gaddafi and the Libyan rebels of committing war crimes. Amnesty warns Libya risks descending into a bloody cycle of attacks and reprisals unless order can be established. Claudio Cordon is Amnesty's senior director for research and regional programs. This report covers uh, roughly the last uh, six months, uh, basically the battle for, uh, for Libya. And we looked at uh, abuses from the side of the Gaddafi forces, uh, many war crimes, uh, possibly crimes against humanity, but also there have been abuses on the part of the fighters who opposed Colonel Gaddafi. And that have included, uh, especially in initial days, uh, uh, people that have been uh, lynched, uh, whether Gaddafi soldiers, and also in the following weeks, people suspected of having been part of the Gaddafi security forces, so-called mercenaries, many black Africans uh, are being uh, automatically assumed to be mercenaries and others. And and uh, we are concerned now about uh, the situation in the uh, prison and uh, in the detention centers. A senior Palestinian official said today the Palestinian Authority will go to the United Nations Security Council and seek full membership in the world body next week, despite the looming threat of a U.S. veto. The announcement was made by Mohammed Shtaya, a senior member of Fatah's Central Committee. His comment came one day after President Obama publicly confirmed for the first time the United States will oppose any attempt by the Palestinians to achieve statehood, a move he described as a, quote, distraction. In an interview with Spanish-language reporters Monday, Obama said, quote, if this came to the Security Council, we would object very strongly, precisely because we think it would be counterproductive. We don't think that it would actually lead to the outcome that we want, which is a two-state solution, Obama said. If the United States vetoes Palestinian statehood at the Security Council level, the general body of the U.N. General Assembly would likely then vote to grant the Palestinians enhanced observer status as a non-member state. On Monday, Arab states announced plans to push for a fully-fledged Palestinian state at the United Nations next week. Sheikh Hamad bin Jassim Al Thani is Prime Minister of Qatar. The Arab states have agreed to refer to the United Nations the demand for full membership for a Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital. And this committee has worked to gather the support of states for the right of the Palestinians to membership. And we have approved the necessary measures to achieve this initiative. In campaign news, Texas Governor Rick Perry came under heavy fire on Social Security, jobs and his record in Texas in a heated Republican presidential debate debate hosted by the Tea Party and CNN. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney pressed Perry on whether he still believes Social Security should be shifted to the states and ended as a federal program. Perry defended his stance. The issue is, are there ways to move uh, the states into Social Security for state employees or for retirees? We did in the state of Texas back in the 1980s. I think those types of thoughtful conversations with America, rather than trying to scare uh, seniors like you're doing and other people, it's time to have a legitimate conversation in this country about how to fix that program where it's not bankrupt. G Governor, the term Ponzi scheme is what scared seniors, number one. And number two, suggesting that Social Security should no longer be a federal program and return to the states and unconstitutional is likewise frightening. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney. Newly released data shows the number of borrowers defaulting on federal student loans has jumped sharply in recent years, especially for students at for-profit schools. The Department of Education said Monday the national default rate has risen to 8.8 percent, nearly twice the rate in 2005. 
Officials of the Nuclear Safety Authority in France claim they've detected no radioactive leaks following an explosion at a plant near the Mediterranean Sea Monday. The blast killed one person, seriously burned another, and injured three others. According to the company's website, the Centrico nuclear facility, located some 18 miles from the city of Avignon, possesses and conditions low-level nuclear waste. France is the most nuclear-dependent nation on the planet, with 58 nuclear reactors across the country. An Oakland area children's museum has canceled an art exhibit featuring the work by Palestinian children depicting Israel's invasion of the Gaza Strip in 2008 and 2009. Last week, officials with Oakland's Museum of Children's Art informed the organizers of the exhibit, the Middle East Children's Alliance, that the project had become too controversial and distracted from the museum's mission of bringing art education to children. The art, created by Palestinian children between the ages of 9 and 11, included images of bombs dropping, tanks and people getting shot. And it was 40 years ago today when New York State Police raided the Attica prison in upstate New York, ending a prison uprising to protest inhumane conditions at the facility. For four days, the unarmed prisoners held 39 prison guards hostage. On September 13th, New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller ordered armed state troopers to raid the prison. Troopers then shot indiscriminately over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. 39 men would die, 29 prisoners and 10 guards. After the shooting stopped, police beat and tortured scores of more prisoners. Newly uncovered audio recordings reveal that President Richard Nixon enthusiastically supported the violent operation when he spoke by phone with New York Governor Nelson Rockefeller on the day of the raid. Rockefeller confides in the president that before the raid, he thought it was possible that as many as 300 prisoners could be killed, but went ahead with the operation anyway. This tape was obtained by University of New Hampshire at Manchester historian Teresa Lynch. I have Governor Rockefeller for you, sir. There you are. Mr. President, I know you've had a hard day, but uh, I want you to know that I just back you to the hilt. And I, I was sitting here talking to Bob Altman. I, I uh, didn't get your call because I've had a cabinet meeting, and then I had a meeting with business leaders right afterwards, and I've been all, just got out. But uh, the courage you showed and the judgment in not granting amnesty, it was right, and I don't care what the hell the papers or anybody else says. Uh, I don't care what they say. I think uh, that, that you had to do it that way because if you would have granted amnesty in this case, it would have meant that you would have had prisons in an uproar all over this country. That's right. And you, you did the right thing. It's a tragedy that these poor fellows are shot, but uh, I just want you to know that's my view, and I pulled the troops around here to back that right to the hilt. Well, aren't you great, Mr. President? I, I only called you because I wanted to uh, alert you that we were going in, and right. when we went in, we couldn't tell whether all 39 hostages would be killed and maybe two or 300 prisoners. Throughout the tapes, President Nixon discusses the racial component of the uprising, describing the prison rebellion as, quote, basically a black thing. Nixon would go on to erroneously state that all the victims of crackdown were African American, downplaying the multiracial leadership within Attica at the time of the uprising. Tell me this. Is this a, are these primarily blacks that you're dealing with? Oh, yes. The, the whole thing was led by the blacks. Are all the prisoners that were killed blacks? Uh, are there any I whites? haven't got that report, but I have to. I would yeah. say just off yeah. and yes. Yeah. Uh, we did it though only when they were in the process of murdering the guards, or when they were attacking our people as they came in to get the guards. You had to do it. And otherwise, we were captured all the cell blocks and so forth without uh, shooting a shot. And no troopers uh, were wounded. One of them, well, one of them was in the leg. But uh, only one trooper was wounded. Good. That's right. Good. It really was Good. a beautiful operation. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I mean.